Now we're going to cover into a very deep subject in Java, and that is objects. Here I printed out one of the shortest and best explanations of object-oriented programming explained by Steve Jobs. What he goes on to say here, and I'll have this slideshow inside the course, is that basically objects are living, breathing things that have memory and that have behaviors to be able to do things, and that they can interact with other things in the world that also have behavior and a certain state, and that you can modify that state and use behavior to communicate with other entities or other objects in your world. It's great to read this whole thing. I won't read it now, but pause the video if you want to read it. The two biggest things for right now to, to remember about objects and object-oriented programming, it's commonly referred to as OO, is that they can be used to define things to a computer. So objects are how you, for instance, you could define a car to a computer. And every object has a state and a behavior. So for instance, a car will have something like the name of the car, the wheels, and the weight of the car. Those would all be the state. And then it could have behaviors such as drive or calculate max speed. So then it would calculate the max speed. Now to define a class in Java, we have the following example. It's also important to note the difference between a class and an object. These words are kind of used a lot and it's good to know the difference between them. A class is a blueprint for representing an object. So for instance, if I have a Rubik's cube, if I have 10 Rubik's cubes, the blueprint for creating that Rubik's cube would be, you know, a three by three by three square cube that has different combinate that has, you know, six different colors on it that you can churn. But then that's the blueprint for every Rubik's cube. But then I could create 10 objects, 10 Rubik's cubes. And then as I twist them, they would all have different states. They would all be completely different objects, but my, blueprint for them, my class was the same. This is a code example of a really basic class. So we used a new keyword that we haven't learned about, public, and then we use a, another keyword which we've seen before, but we're using it for the first time, class, and that's you define a class, and then the name of your class, you can call it anything. I called it car. It must be capitalized, so I called it car. And then with a curly brace, you can then define the wheel the behavior and the state of it. So for instance, the first two lines, the wheels and the height are variables. They keep track of each object's state. So for instance, I chose for this to have the state of keeping track of its wheels and its weight. Then it has behavior. And we're using this keyword void, which we haven't learned about. We haven't gone too deep into methods yet, but this is the behavior a class can have and that is a get speed method. So for instance, maybe I could use the weight, the state of the car to then calculate the speed of the car. Here is how to, once we've created a object, a class, how to actually make it an object. So here we go, we have a class definition, but we haven't actually written any code or created any cars in our program. We've just laid out the blueprint about it. When we run the new keyword, this is definitely a new keyword, we have car, car, of t car, car. Let me explain this simply. What I'm doing on this line is that I am creating, I'm using that car class to create a car object. So this car object actually exists and now has its living, breathing state and behavior. The way you do this is by stating the type of the variable you want, just like you did with an int or with a string. And the type of variable it is, is it's a car type. So that is the class it belongs to. So it belongs to class car. The variables that we've learned up to this point, int, double, boolean, things like that, are primitive types that are not part of a class. The only class we've learned about so far is string. String is a class, and that's used to represent words. 
Then once we define the type and the variable name, which can be anything as we've learned before, we then do new and then the name of the class with a function with parameters. And in this case, the car has no parameters. And we're gonna get into that later. On this line, we are initializing or creating our car object. So we could give it initial parameters to initialize it to a certain state that we would want it to do. And we're gonna go over initialization very soon. And then I'm gonna show you how to call things in the class. So one thing we can do is we can call certain variables associated with the class. Variables are associated to state. And that's why we can do car dot wait. So to get a variable from an object, we simply do the, the variable of your object dot, the dot operator is the linker here, and then the name of that variable that you want to see. I don't do anything with it. I'm just showing you you do car dot wait. And then to call a behavior, you would simply do car dot get speed and then have your opening and closing parentheses. Now it's important to note here that this signifies a function call when I have an open and ending parenthesis. So uh, this is an actual behavior and so it's a function. So get speed is a function and that's why it has those parentheses. Car.wait looks very similar but doesn't have those parentheses because it's not a function, it's just a variable. You just need to access it by doing car.wait. New car with these parentheses is creating a new object, but it's also calling an initialization function. So a function is run when the new car is triggered. We just haven't defined that initialization. If you don't define that initialization, it gets written for you by Java automatically. And we'll go into that later.